Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. Now, if you've been watching Facebook, YouTube, or Astrobin, you know there's a new comet up in the eastern sky. The name of the comet is Leonard, or as I said in my last video, is it Leonard? Anyway, the comet is there. The question is, how do I photograph this comet, and when done photographing, how do I stack it? Well, I'm going to show you how I do that in Deep Sky Stacker. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Hi, and welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I do a lot of astrophotography right from my own backyard here on the south side of Savannah, Georgia. And currently I'm using the Orion Eon 130 millimeter telescope. And that's sitting on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. And the camera that I'm using is the ZWO ASI 071 uh, MC Pro. That's a one shot color camera. And in this case, I use the Bader UV IR cut filter. Now, the comet is in the eastern sky, and it's rising about 5 o'clock local time uh, in, in my vicinity, almost due east, and it's, it's quite near the star Arcturus at the moment. That's in late November into early December. And it's heading, though, toward the horizon. So you have about two weeks to catch this comet as it moves across the sky. And by the way, it is moving relatively fast. Uh, it is uh, uh, calculated speed at 42 miles per second. Uh, in layman's term, that's about 94,000 miles per hour. So a couple of things here in this video. First of all, I want to show you how I stack the images in Deep Sky Stacker uh, to come up with a, uh, an image of the comet, like you see with this one right here. And also, I want to see if I can detect the motion, the speed of that comet. So using the Deep Sky Stacker, I was able to generate images from that as well to make a movie. And I'm going to show you that movie at the end of the video. And yeah, you can definitely see the comet moving uh, behind the uh, background stars. And while I was waiting for the comet, it's, you know, at 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, high up in the sky already is the constellation Orion. And or the Orion Nebula is always fun uh, to look at. It's always a great target to uh, set your telescopes with and, and to practice with. And it's just a, a beautiful deep space object. Anyway, let's get to the point in question. How do I stack? All right, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm loading in my calibration files, the, uh, the darks, the flats, and the dark flats right there. Now, the next thing I need to do is open up the picture files, and I put these over into uh, November 27th, the morning I did that, and I called it uh, Leonard DSS, and I put them in there. And there are the files I took, and I was able to get quite a bit there. Now, some of these, I think, came into daylight. We'll find that out in a minute. So here we go. Uh, for example, there is the first image. You've got to bring it up a little bit in Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, there's the comet there, right there. All right. So now, um, what I've got to do is check all these. Just hit Check All. And I can individually check them. And I think down near the end, I came into the rising sun. Yes, that's too bright, obviously. So let's uh, find out where the uh, sunrise and twilight time began. And all those files are going to be gone. Um, let's see here. We're about there. Let's, let's pull these all out. From here on down, I'm just going to pull them out. Okay? And just remove, for now, just remove from the list. Okay, I could have deleted it, but... Um, just in case I need it. All right, uh, so here we have the files. Actually, I'm still get, I'm, I'm getting a little light in here. And yeah, that's too light. That's too light. Uh, let's take these two out too. Remove. I, I right mouse click and then and the menu comes up, remove from list. All right, so there we have that. Now, now, what I'm going to be doing in DSS is to make two different images. First image I'm going to make with the comet moving and the star is stationary. The second one I'm going to take 
the comet stationary and the stars moving. So let's do the first one first so I can get everything registered and uh, go into settings, stacking settings. I'm going to turn off the comet stacking if it's already on. I'm going back to standard stacking for right now. And uh, from that, I'm going to go over here to intermediate files and click on TIFF image and create a registered calibrated file for each light frame. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I want to generate a movie file. Uh, however, a deep sky stacker doesn't create movie files, it just creates the uh, TIFF files or the uh, FIT files. So, but I want a, a, a string of movie files or TIFF files so I can create a movie from that and I'll do that over in uh, DaVinci Video Editor. So okay here. Now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, register the pictures. I'll hit the advanced mode, count the background stars, see if I'm anywhere between 100 and 200 and a little low. So let's go down a little bit more. Let's check it again. I like it to have a little bit over 100 stars. 122, that looks good. All right. Um, everything's fine. Don't worry about that. I have a, um, uh, my dark frame is just a little bit off, but it, it, it's close enough where it doesn't matter. And according to this, I'm going to have a total of 54 minutes of exposure time. So here we go. And we're off to the races. So now it's registering the uh, stars, and it'll go through that and then it'll go through the stacking. So uh, I'll pause the video here and I'll see you when it's finished. Computing final picture, loading the picture, and displaying the picture. And let's just bring this histogram up a little bit. And now notice, see the comet here is blurred, but the stars are sharp. The stars are sharp, but the comet is blurred. Uh, that's because the comet has moved from here to here in this 54 minute time frame. So, okay, but that's the first step. I needed this background stars here for the movie. Next, we want to go into settings, uh, stacking settings, comet, comet stacking. All right. This will stack the comet and actually blur out the stars. It's almost like Starnet uh, taking out the stars and keeping the comet centered. But there's another trick we got to do after this. The next thing you got to do, uh, just click on here, uh, go over into comet mode right here and register all light frames to continue without registering the light frames. See yeah, how we can do that, because I already registered them. All right, now, there I gotta set the area on the comet. Now to do that, you wanna set right directly over the comet itself. Now if you move your mouse and hold the shift key, you've got control over it. And there you can see the center of the comet. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, you can see I'm trying to zero in on the comet. Now, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard up, down, right, and left. And that's pretty close right there. And then press the left mouse button and you get a circle over the center of the comet. Now the thing is, you have to do that for each and every frame. So, next frame. And we do all that. All right, there's the last one. So now let's check them all. And let's go back to the top. And there's the images right there. And okay. And I got them all centered. Going all the way down, checking them all. All right. So now we got that done. We go into the stacking. Again, let's go in to make sure we got the settings correct. Uh, stacking settings, comet. Comet stacking, okay. And let's do it, let's uh, hit stack. All right, let's 
bring the histogram down a little bit in this case. Right about there. And there you can see I got a nice clean comet. Uh, it's it's the this tracking program tracked the comet and not the stars. And the stars are gone. It's kind of like you know Starnet. So the next thing I want to do is just minimize this and go into PixInsight. I like using PixInsight. You can go directly into Photoshop, but for me it's easier to go right into the PixInsight. Open up the file, and in this case uh, it was 1127, Leonard DSS, and um, I can just hit the modified. No, it's just, well, auto save one. There it is right there. Stretch it out. There you, go. you got some stars in there. We'll, we'll, we can clean that out later, but I'm more concerned about the comet here. And then the next thing I want to do is open up um, the first saved image. Actually, that's that one right there. If I open that up, you're going to notice the stars are intact, but the comet is blurred. See how that is right there? So what I want to do is combine these two, but I got an Im uh, 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 it's going to be hard to take this out. So what I'm going to do is going to take one of the registered files, open, and I'm going to take somewhere in the middle here. Let's see. These are the registered files. Let's just take, the, take that one there. All right. Hit register there. Open and stretch it. All right. That's just one image there. And I'm going to use this as my base image right here. And from there, I'm just going to go to histogram transformation. It's the way I like to do it. It's just do it from here to here, drop it in there, hit that, and save it over like that. I'm not going to use this one at all. And then this one here, I'm just going to again do a histogram transformation on it. Execute. Bring it back. Now I'm going to save this as, all right, we'll just call it uh, Comet Only. Okay, 16-bit, all right, save, okay. And this one will be Comet and Stars. Save as, again, 16-bit, it's already 16-bit. Okay, we can minimize that. Then we just go into um, Photoshop. I might have some stuff in there. There's the, there's the Orion Nebula I did the other night. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is open up the picture with just the comet, one, one frame, the comet and the stars, and then the comet only. Now I'm going to Control-All and then Control-C for copy. I'm going back over this image here. I'm going to paste it over like so. And then I'm going to go over here uh, where it says normal. And I'm going to go over to lighten right there. So now you can see the difference. There you have your comet. I've got a little artifact down here I can clean up if I want to. But um, that's pretty much it right there. Now I can go into the background here and go into, uh, well, just go to control L for a light control. And I can darken it right here. Um, and I can go into here, control L and darken it. Okay, that looks good. All right, there's a start right there. And, and, and there's somewhat of your picture. Now, if I want to get rid of this, let's, let's try that. Let's just turn this off. Oh, it's on this. Okay, turn that on, turn that on. I want to get rid of that little mess right there. Just go into the eraser tool. Let's see what happens here if I go eraser. Uh, let's try the spot check first. Spot healing. Yeah, that worked. All right. 
Let me go back on. Yeah, how's that? Okay. So there you have it. There's the comet right there. I got a little bit of a glare over here. Uh, that was from the uh, rising sun. So there's your final picture right there. What about the movie? The movie, I use uh, DaVinci Resolve 17. It's, uh, I think it's 17.4 right now. And I already started the movie. Remember all those tip files that I made earlier in Deep Sky Stacker? I'm going to use those tip files in this program here, and I'm going to make a movie out of it. Now, what I did is I, I loaded all the frames. You can see all the frames that I've loaded uh, in here, and I put them in sequential order, and then I set it up in my timeline like so, and there's the initial frame, and then watch as I pull over time. Watch the comment. You'll see it moving. And there. All right. Now, watch again. There is the comment. Watch how it moves. You can see it moving. And then the sun rising here. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of work involved in processing these videos and uh, to, uh, to get an image uh, from all the images put together. And, but I was able to do it in Deep Sky Stacker. And I hope you learned some of the tricks. And there might be tricks, that, and there probably are tricks, that I don't even know how to use. And if you know any additional uh, tricks in Deep Sky Stacker or other stacking programs, yeah, go ahead. Leave your comments below. I like to read them, and other people read them too. So uh, it's not just me who, who is reading the comments. A lot of other people are reading those comments as well, and I really appreciate it. And, and you know, again, uh, I posted in my last video that, you know, hit the like button if you like the image, if you like the program, uh, because it helps with the YouTube algorithm to spread the video around to the YouTube world. For example, um, the past several videos that I've been posting, I've been getting about, oh, anywhere between 300 to 500 views in the first two days. Uh, but the last video, I asked you to hit the like button, and a lot of you did, and I thank you for that, because you know what happened? In the first 24 hours, I had 1,100 hits, or 1,100 views. So, and, and the last I looked is at 1,500 after a day and a half. So, yeah. It's, uh, thank you for that, for doing that. So your comments are very helpful in more ways than one. Now remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders. Just look at them. There's two of them right there behind me. But all of these are in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, get out and enjoy the sky. Clear skies, everyone.